Morning. Let's drive, let's pray. Isn't it good to pray? Come on. I just would appreciate your prayers. <laughs> um, I love preaching, um, but for some reason, the last few days, I've just thought, why do I do this? <laughs> In the sense of, oh, I, I just feel quite... Um, uh, vulnerable, not with you, not with God, but just in myself. And so I share that not to draw attention to me, but actually we don't stand at the front with people that have got it all together, as people that have got it all together. And we see that Paul was a bit like that as well. So thanks for your love and prayers. And uh, Right, so we're looking at the foundations of the church in Thessalonica, the Thessalonian church. And part of the reason of that, obviously it's good scripture, But also, uh, we feel as elders, prophetically, this is something that God is building into us. If you like, the shape and the model of the Thessalonian church is something for us. I mean, all scripture's good, isn't it? But this has got something for us. Um, So we're going to get on to Thessalonians, but I want to take you back to the start of the journey for the Thessalonian church, which is in Acts Um, So uh, there's an apostle called Paul, he travels with his companions, often uh, Timothy and Silas, and he's travelling around what is now Turkey. He's travelling because he's been commissioned by the church in Antioch, and he okay, God has called me to this. So you think, great, wouldn't wouldn't life just be like one open door from him after another open door? Wouldn't it be fruitful? God has sent him, he knows he's called, he's got a team, away we go. But what I, what I felt really stirred to draw our attention to is to start the story of the Thessalonica church um, in, back in Acts, uh, not even Acts uh, 17 where the Thessalonica church they're preaching, but in Acts 16. Let me read it to you from Acts 16 verse 6. So Paul and Silas, they're traveling through the area of uh, Phrygia, Galatia, so Turkey, because... The Spirit had prevented them from preaching the word in the province of Asia. Okay, so there we go. Now the Spirit's saying, oh, don't go there. Oh, okay. (laughs) Then coming to the border of Mysia, Mysia, they headed north for the province of Bithynia. But again, the Spirit of Jesus wouldn't let them in there. Now, what are you thinking of by this time? You're with Paul, maybe you're Silas. You're thinking, does this guy know what he's doing? I mean, as we that reading it are thinking, what does it mean the Spirit of Jesus didn't allow? I mean, what was this like? Did Jesus appear? Stop! I mean, was, I mean what was it? Did, they, did it go dark when they got into the border? Dark, okay, we don't go this way back into the... I mean, we don't know. It just says the Spirit of Jesus. So instead, they went on through Mysia to the seaport of Troas. So right at the start, before the Thessalonica church is born, Paul's believing I'm commissioned for this area and these nations. And every try I go and uh, and push through and reach this place, the blooming door shuts. Jesus, you don't let... What's going on? And maybe this morning, you're here, we're here thinking, Lord, what is going on? Why is the door shut? I thought I was serving you. I thought this was the way you wanted me to go. Now it looks like everything's gone wrong. I think if I'm Silas, have you got any idea, Paul? Paul says, no. Jesus keeps saying no. Are you sure you're hearing him right? Sometimes there's a real mystery when you follow God. Paul is having strategic thoughts and plans And the strategy is not working. And this is the scary thing. Sometimes strategy does not work. Sometimes thinking and reasoning does not work. Sometimes, okay, this is the plan, God. I'm sure sometimes that doesn't work. But this is where it turns the corner. Paul goes to sleep. Um, How many days, weeks, we don't know. Paul goes to sleep and he has a dream of a man waving and calling him. Strategy and planning, nil. Prophetic dreams, one. That night, Paul had a vision. So verse 9 of chapter 16. That night, Paul had a vision. A man from Macedonia in northern Greece, presumably in some costume, 
so that he knew, and northern Greece was standing there pleading with him, come over to Macedonia, come and help us. Ah, thought Paul, maybe God's speaking to us. <laughs> so we, that's him and his companions, decided to leave for Macedonia at once. The next morning, over the cornflakes, Paul says, guys, I've got something to tell you. Uh, what is it, Paul? Another nation? Yeah, I had this dream. Having they concluded that God was calling us to preach the good news. Friends, sometimes strategy doesn't work. And to be honest, Dave and I, as we have our elders' meetings, and maybe you in other contexts, you're thinking, where is life unfolding? How is it going? And we think, well, we're not too sure. <laughs> we used to have these long plans, and there would be, it could be a year plan. But at the minute, it's very difficult. Strategy doesn't seem to work in the same way. Do you find that? And maybe not just now, but maybe that's, that's been um, how it's been for a long while, you say. Planning is really helpful. Strategy is helpful. Having an idea of where you're going is helpful. But it's God's leading that opens and shuts doors. Isn't it? We have plans, but it's God's purposes that open the way for us. And we're in this season... Welcome to this season where as a church, but in our lives, wider lives, planning and strategy don't have the same ability to help us through. Actually, we're dependent on you. Why did Jesus seem to allow Paul to go somewhere that he wasn't going to let him in? I mean, why did, Paul, why did Jesus not tell Paul right at the beginning, here's a dream? Why does God seem to let you and I feel around in the dark sometime? And now, why does God leave us in that moment? Remember Joshua? Why does God lead us in that moment? Okay, Moses is dead. Yeah, but why does God leave us? Because in that moment, we find something fresh from him. Why is God allowing you and us? Why is open door? Why are we in this season? Actually, we're in this season because God says, I'm enough for you. And this is where you learn to lean into me and follow me. It always was about that. We just had a bit more confidence in our plans. But now we realise, actually it was never about that. It's about following you, Lord. Where do you want us to put our foot? That's why we're going to be praying tonight and during this week. So Lord, where do you want us to put our next foot? Not, okay, where's the end of the journey? Where do we put our next step? We're in that season and if you follow through that chapter, the place they go to is Philippi. And that doesn't end up well because Paul and Silas get thrown into prison. So now you're thinking, okay, what about... But then out of the prison they go to Thessalonica. So we'll get to that in a minute. But maybe you're in a season of limitation. Maybe you're in a season where you thought, God, I thought I was following your plan and it's all got dug up. We've been through that season as a church over the last few years. It feels like stuff has got dug up and COVID has um, come into that. I want to release faith in our hearts. Faith in our hearts that God is about a fresh planting this morning. I want to release faith in your heart. I forgot, I meant to bring a rake because I think God is raking the soil of open door. He's cleaned the weeds, he's cleaned the area, he's raking it and stones come up, don't they, when they rake. He's clearing it and he's, this morning he's sowing seeds of faith in our hearts. He's sowing seeds of faith in your heart. Maybe it was a seed that you once thought and you, oh, and it, it didn't take root. Maybe it started to root but it got trodden on. But God is releasing faith and seeds right across the church not just about church seeds, so I'm not talking, okay, it's not just about what we do here, but actually seeds of faith in our lives. I think that's what God's doing through COVID. All of our lives are his, the whole thing, 24-7. He's raking over to Adrian, open door, each of us, will you trust me in this? The strategy's not working. Lord, okay, speak to me. I feel like God wants to release fresh dreams and vision in us today. Whatever your age your young men and your old men, says Joel. In the age of the Spirit, your young men will see visions, your old men dream dreams. I think I've got that the right way around. So maybe you've carried a seed, even for this place, you've carried a seed in your heart. Part of Open Door, you've carried it. 
There's an expression maybe of the siege for your street, for the kingdom of God advancing in your workplace. I want to water, I believe the Spirit wants to water faith, that seed in your heart this morning. I want to speak and release fresh pregnancies. Fresh pregnancies. I'll try not to catch anyone's eye, but you know. Because <laughs> that's what I think God's wanting to do. Fresh pregnancies. Fresh pregnancies. I, can't, I, I used to have this. It's stirred in me, but for whatever reason, it's, it has died. It's gone dry. God says, I'm come to water. Like Paul, I've got this thought, a door shut, got this thought. And now God says, now here's the dream, I'm calling you. What is God giving a glimmer of faith again? And maybe you think it's just a flicker. God comes to speak and whisper and say, will you trust me in this? Adrian, open door. Importantly, the companions heard the dream from Paul and they concluded. Friends, that's why it's a... It's so important that we're a they. It's not I conclude, it said Paul. It's no, we conclude. God's in this. Friends, at this time, we need each other. Hey, can you pray with me? We do it in life groups. We do it here. All sorts. Can, you just, can I just chat? God is stirring this. And maybe it's a long time till it bears fruit, but a seed has to start germinating somewhere. So maybe this morning, there's little roots coming out your seeds there's a little shoot it's not yet above the soil God's okay with that you can trust him what seed has God given you what is he stirring and promising what is fresh and our vulnerability before him is to say Lord I don't know how it will happen but it will so for me four or five years ago just God stirred little bits about the Middle East for me and uh, I, I, I'd never been. I, I'd never been on holiday. I didn't really under, didn't understand. I didn't follow anything like that. But God began to put a love for the people of that part of the world. Okay, how can that be? And God once gave me a picture of firing an arrow uh, into one of the closed countries um, in the Middle East. Oh, well, it was like a seed. It was like a prayer. But it was like God calling. Um, and then just uh, previously, but certainly in the last week, I just did some online teaching about the prophetic into, um, into a screen where most of the people are hidden because they can't show their faces because they're in this country and just for security. I said, Lord, there was a seed that you planted and now it's, it's bearing fruit. For me, that was my seed. But you all have other seeds in your workplace, in your family, in your street, in Open Door. What might God be saying? Okay, it's going to take four or five years. But look what God can do. Wasn't it great to see Peter up here this morning? Up wherever he's gone. It was great to see Peter here this morning. Do you remember? Some of us have been around. We remember Peter his first Sunday. Do you? Maybe. You remember him. He's like a seed. But look how he's growing. That was great, Peter. Contribution, strengthening us, pastoring us. Actually, God takes different ones of us. And he's like, okay, I'll grow you this way. I'll grow you that way. Maybe a door's been shut for you. Maybe you were asked not to do something. But God says, I want to water that seed and, and open the door for you again. Paul didn't see the whole end of the story. Okay, a man from Greece is saying, come over. We don't see the whole picture, do we? Let's not stop at that. Okay, this didn't work and that didn't work. Okay, I'll give up. God's releasing faith and grace in us again. Okay, Lord, can I, I trust you with that seed. So I pray, I want to release faith for leadership in the workplace, in the office. I want to water that seed. Dave and I, we would want to water the gifts of leadership in the church, men and women, young and old. You see, out of the dream, Paul went to Philippians, and out of the Philippians, he went to Thessalonica and he started to preach. So right at the start of the Thessalonica church their story would be we came about because Paul had a dream they were born prophetically if you like they were born out of a dream and some travels and that's our story too isn't it open door we as God's people we're born here not because we had a bright idea but because God said I gave someone in Barton Seagrave uh, a, a, a vicar in Barton Seagrave a vision a seed and he saw it producing life in that part of Kettering 
Actually, God came and watered the seed, and, and in his bright plan, he brought Dave and Leslie or Chris and said, uh, he brought us. He said, okay, I'm going to water it, and I'm going to move it into the middle of the town. I know what. I'm going to provide them a place right in the center. God takes little seeds, things that are nothing, and grows them. The great thing is the Thessalonica story can be our story too. So that's where we want to go. Oh, I missed that bit. Okay, so in their DNA, they had a story of a prophetic dream. Friends, we love and value the prophetic. We love and value dreams, vision. We love companions praying together. We love the word of God that opens us. We love the sense of the Spirit's initiative. So I want to pray right now and release grace in our hearts for the Spirit's initiative in you, but in us. Is that okay with you? Okay, so it's not about cajoling, but it is about releasing. So maybe just put your hands out if, if you know that actually, God, I, I want to be good soil and I want to be a seed. Lord, plant the seed in me. And the Holy Spirit will speak all across the room to different things. But I pray in your name, Jesus, you're the gardener, but with you and your anointing to release faith now in the room for seeds for seeds ah, seeds of mission seeds of pastoral care seeds of a venture at work of a meeting seeds of faith for a project seeds of leadership seeds of love again for that broken relationship parenting of children spouses seeds of faith again God. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. Do you know the great thing is through the cross of Jesus, even if you dug up the seed previously, God says, here it is again. There's nothing that you have committed or said or done that is greater than his love to reinstitute and say, will you plant again? Maybe you feel, okay, it was my fault, I messed up. Jesus says, I come to you, will you receive again? Maybe you need to just get right with him and say, Lord, I'm sorry. I forgive, confess. But I want to release faith too for leadership. Faithful leadership in open door. Friends, I want to, we want to release as elders a variety of shape of leaders. Black and white, old and young, different backgrounds. Friends, there's no cookie cutter leadership shape here. Whatever your style and gift, if God is calling, we want to partner with the Holy Spirit. So just release faith. Maybe you thought, I don't have permission, I'm not the shape. Friends, there's freedom for the spirit to grow graceful leadership in each of us. Friends, there's freedom. There's freedom. If you felt your top got cut off, <laughs> a gardener came and snipped, actually there's freedom to grow in diversity. Let's be a garden like that. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. Heather, I just want to bless you. Just sense Jesus' blessing for you. We want to say there's space and room for you to flourish in all your gift. It's like you're a sunflower. Then there's, there's height to grow. There's, there's space for you to grow. God's face, sun shines on you. 
And as you do that, you're going to find actually there's growth and there's stature about you. It doesn't mean you have to stand at the front. I mean, maybe that's what God does, but there's a blessing on you of his face and kindness. There's freedom. I want you to know that there's safety. There's safety. Dave and I as elders and others around, you are in a safe place to flourish. Holy Spirit, we just pray. May that be a prayer for, for all of us. God, come. Friends, then as the church started, Paul went to Thessalonica and uh, he preached the gospel. The Spirit came. And I bet his mind went back and they spoke. Hey guys, do you remember that dream? That was so lucky that we... So lucky. It was so fortunate that we followed that dream, wasn't it? And Silas and Paul said, yeah, I knew it was... Sometimes we don't know. There's a journey, but Paul is there. And now he knows he's got the prophetic word of God behind him. Got that. But why didn't that open? There's lots of questions we carry with us, don't we? But now God has called us and he preaches the gospel. And this is what he says to them when he writes this letter. We know, dear brothers and sisters, I'm in 1 Thessalonians now, verse 4. We know, dear brothers and sisters, that God loves you. He's chosen you to be his own people. How does he know that? He says this, for when we brought you the good news, it wasn't only with words, but it was also with power. For the Holy Spirit gave you full assurance or deep conviction. You know how we lived among you for your sake. You became imitators of us and of the Lord. In spite of severe suffering, you welcomed the message with the joy given by the Holy Spirit. Friends, it seemed that what the Spirit ignited in a dream come over had now started to blossom. Paul's arrived, he's preached, and they're receiving it. Yeah, this is true. They're finding Jesus is alive. The Spirit's coming with deep conviction. And what does that look like? Deep conviction. What we said was true. The words, Paul's words came with power. Friends, we pray. May God release seeds of faith to see signs and wonders, healings, deliverance is God's freedom the spirit of the Lord is on us he says you know of our concern from the way we lived when we were there with you you received the message with joy given by the Holy Spirit friends what an example of 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 God's grace and spirit they were and aren't we the same example we receive God's work with the spirit of joy Lord, may we be that. May we be the soil of joy. It's a work of God, but we respond. We respond. They received it with joy in spite of severe suffering. Say, Lord, I'll be really joyful when the severe suffering stops. And they received it in spite of severe suffering. What a message of maturity for us. In this way, you imitated both us and the Lord. As a result... You became an example to all the believers in Greece. Ah, but we became an example because we received the message with joy in suffering. Friends, it was about maturity. God was bringing maturity in them that they were full of joy even in suffering. Their example was how they received the message. And that's our prayer. That's your prayer too, isn't it? That God, your work in me releases joy around us we believe it's one of our hallmarks it's one of the hallmarks of open door we'll be known as a place of joy like the Thessalonians because God is here so Father we want to pray for a release of joy in our hearts because God is here that's not uh, it's not manufactured joy and hilarity and laughter to, um, we're not a comedy club and yet we are, the Spirit of God is here. And when God's grace touches our hearts, it brings joy. One of the marks of the Spirit is joy, even in severe suffering. Joy because of Jesus. So they were initiated by the Spirit, the dream. They were empowered by the Spirit as Paul preached. Let me finish with this. Verse 8. And now the word of the Lord is ringing out from you to people everywhere, even beyond Kettering. For wherever we go, we find people telling us about your faith in God. We don't need to tell them about it. 
Friends, what might God want to do across Northamptonshire and Leicestershire? Why? Because they keep talking about the wonderful welcome you gave us. Thanks, Jeanette. Adrian Newman, other people, you've been at the door. Actually, open door, what a wonderful welcome you've given. And the message rings out. Friends, we're all part of the welcome team, by the way. Did you know that? We're all part. The message goes out. You, and how you turned away from idols to serve the living and true God. Are you on that journey of turning away? That's our message that rings out. And they speak of how you're looking forward to the coming of God's Son from heaven, Jesus. Wonderful welcome, changed lives, heavenly perspective. That's what they were known for and the message rang out. It wasn't polished sermons. It wasn't polished services. It wasn't a building. It was a welcome, turning from God, following him, receiving with joy because God had initiated them. And that's true for us. So I want to pray. We do pray as elders, but I pray, why don't you join us this week in prayer Holy Spirit we want to say we're in we are in for you to grasp like the Thessalonica church Lord a model church to the whole of Greece to the whole of Northamptonshire God you've called us to be a region influencing and serving church Lord so I pray release seeds of faith in us in order that that happens Lord, it's not about a bright star of one person. Lord, it's a family receiving your work with joy, transformed by the Spirit. Oh, God. Maybe you're watching at home. We want to encourage you. Take a step. Okay, we're in. Maybe you're here the first time. You're looking in. Maybe you're coming along on every three or four weeks. Maybe it's time to say, God, I'm in. God, I'm in. Holy Spirit, come and illuminate your work in our hearts. Fresh faith. May Jesus be glorified. Amen.